Hey developers, before I start this video, I just wanted to let you guys know this is a video for my new course, Create Awesome Vue.js Apps with Nux.js. In this course, I go over all the basics of Vue.js and also how to start using Nux, which is a, a way to create universal Vue.js applications. So please check it out. If you're interested in the description below, I have a link. You can click on it. The course isn't out yet, but you can sign up. You'll be the first person to know when it's out. And also, I'll send you a free Vue.js cheat sheet so you can get up and running with Vue really quickly. So click out, click that link in the description. That really helps me out. And let's begin. Let's take a look at testing with Vue.js. So we're going to go ahead and look at a basic project. We're going to do a couple of real simple tests. And I'm going to show you the basics of how to get started and also where to go if you need more information. We're going to be using Vue CLI 3, so it actually is a lot easier to use testing with Vue CLI 3 than it was in previous versions of Vue. You actually had to install a lot more things, and it includes Vue Test Utils, which is a great library that makes testing a lot easier in Vue. So let's take a look how you would do this. So let's say we're starting a new project. So we'll do Vue Create New Proj, just to say as an example. And once we hit this, it'll ask us some information. Uh, we'll go ahead and manually select, select features. And when we go through here, it'll ask us, let's say, unit testing and end-to-end -end testing. So we're going to focus in this video on unit testing. Uh, and later on, I'll show you uh, uh, videos on how to do Cypress with end-to-end -end testing. But for now, we'll look at unit testing. And I just went in and picked a preprocessor, let's say SAS. And so when it asks you the testing library, you have the choices between Mocha and Chai or Jest. Now, they both have their pluses and minuses. Mocha and Chai is a, a perfectly fine way of, of running your tests. A Jest does do a few things that Mocha and Chai don't, like doing snapshots. Uh, we won't be going into snapshots in this video, but it's good to know that it's there. So I would just choose Jest. And then at this point, it asks you to go ahead and either put it in dedicated config files or a package JSON file. So I'm not going to go ahead and finish this, but you can kind of see this is how you would add testing to your um, when you create your project. So I already have one created here, so we're going to go ahead and, and move to it. It's my test just example, and I, don't, I haven't done anything here, so I'm going to run serve, and that's going to go ahead and run it. I create the development server. You can see here I have my local host running on 8080 with the website, and then here is the code over here. So what we really care about is two things, is the, the hello world file and the uh, spec file. So if we look at the spec file, it's right here. This is like the default test that it comes with. And you can see here, if you look here, it does this shallow mount, and it uses uh, the awesome view test utils library. And then it, uh, the test case is usually like this. You put a describe, which is usually the name of the component that you're testing. And then you create all these uh, its. And each one of these ITs here is a different test case, is the way it works. Like it describes this. And then we can run it from the command line. I'll show you there. So if we go back here. If we run npm run test colon unit, then it'll run the test uh, unit test. You can see here it passed, of course. We only have one pass. We only have one test, and it passed. So obviously that's working as we expected. So let's go ahead and change this hello world around a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and delete some things. I'm going to delete this, and we're going to refresh it. And you can see here, oops, let me do one thing. Let me restart the server. npm run serve. And that'll restart it. Refresh it. OK, so this is correct now. See, all I have is my message and then um, some links and stuff that are pulled in um, elsewhere. But let's say I wanted to just test this text to make sure it's correct. Um, so you can see the props message. This is actually passed in. Uh, the message is passed in, so that's what this is doing. It's actually testing this message. But let's let's do something else. Let's add a counter here. It's an H2. We're going to count something called counter. I'm going to close the tag. And then in my data object here, 
which I don't have one, so let's create one. Data. And we're going to return. And in my data, I'm going to return uh, something called counter. And I'm going to have it equal 0 for now. And actually, we'll do this. That makes more sense. And we don't need that. All right, see, here's the counter. It starts at 0, as we expected. So let's create a button. And we'll add a click event to it. So we'll uh, click, and we'll just do increment. We'll have an increment method here. So we just need to add the increment method. So we'll add methods, increment, and then we'll have it do this dot counter plus plus. Save it, and we'll make sure we have a name for the button. We'll call it increment. See here, buttons right here. If you press it, it increments it as we expect. So let's do a test case to see if when we press this increment button that this button, that this gets updated, so to speak. So um, right here, there you might notice it says something that says shallow mount. So when you're doing this, is if you're familiar with React and Enzyme, this might become really familiar with you. This is a way you can mount your components inside Vue.js. Uh, shallow mount only mounts the one component. If you do uh, a, the other type of mount, you're actually mounting the child components. But obviously, we don't have any child components on this. But if we did, we would use that. OK, let's go ahead and create a test case for this. So let's see if once we hit the increment that the counter is correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another it. We're going to do check counter after increment button is pressed. And from there, we're going to create an arrow function. And we're going to do, we're going to create a wrapper again. And do a shallow mount. And we're going to do the hello world. And now we can do wrapper. We can do find. It's just one of the methods that they have. And we can find the button. And then we have something called trigger. And we can trigger a click on it. So then we can expect the wrapper, the wrapper. And we can actually have access to all the VM members. If you remember, uh, we there is a VM property. So we have a VM property. And we can just get the counter from it. And we'll expect that to be one. So let's just also expect right here that the wrapper.vm.counter to be zero. So if you can see here, what we're doing is we created a new test case. We're using a shallow mount again on the hello world. We're checking to make sure the counter starts off at zero. We're going to trigger the button click just like we did here. And then we're going to make sure it's one. So let's see if that works. I'm going to go npm run test unit. Oh, great. We got two pass. So everything passed as we expect. So we can see that it's definitely working correctly. Uh, so if you look in the vest view test utils guide, it has uh, a lot of information. Um, what we just did with trigger events. You can do trigger events. You can do options. Uh, you can even. Um, here's some common tips. It tells you what to do. So this is pretty easy. Let's just do one more to see if we can uh, check something. Um, remember, the VM has access to everything in your VM. So we have access to all our methods and everything like that. We could uh, try to do this. Let's just make sure that our method that we created to increment works. So check increment method. We'll have fat arrow function. And then we can do this. I'm just going to copy and paste the wrapper. And we can do a before as well. But there's a way of structuring our test so we don't have to keep copying and pasting all this stuff. There's a before each, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, we're going to do wrapper dot 
uh, let's see your dot VM dot increment let's make sure we know the name of it increment increment and now we're gonna check the counter and see if it's one we're gonna save it all right let's try it one more time all right so they all pass so we can see our method passed the button pressed everything passed as we expect which is awesome so this is just a little bit of a primer of getting started with testing in Vue. I would highly recommend, I'll put a link below to the Vue test utils so you guys can learn more about it.